the space station to receive it. And we do have these checkpoints for all visiting vehicles. And we're continuing to get good views of Dragon as it approaches the International Space Station. International Space Station is currently flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. It is approaching the very northern tip of Hawaii. As we've mentioned before, uh, SpaceX flight controllers, which are based here in Hawthorne, are working in tandem with the NASA team in Houston um, to make sure that everything is going accordingly with Dragon um, as it continues this controlled approach to station. And there you do see that very northern tip of Hawaii that we mentioned. Again, aloha. <laughs> Dragon and the International Space Station flying about 260 statute miles above it. There on the left hand side of your screen is SpaceX core Jake Vendel. And as a reminder, we are continuing to take your questions using the social media hashtag, on social media rather, using the hashtag AskNASA. So please do send in your questions. We'd love to answer them for you. We do have a question from Ashley who wants to know, even though the astronauts are in zero gravity, can they feel the speed of the Dragon? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, generally, no. So once they are uh, basically you know, at velocity inside Dragon. You don't really feel how fast it's going. It's very similar to whenever you're in a car. Uh, let's say you're in the passenger seat and you're uh, the driver, you know, you're on the freeway. Uh, and if you're going 65 miles an hour, you don't really feel how fast you're going. Uh, you might be able to see it based on looking out the window. Um, but generally speaking, you don't feel it unless if there is a change in that velocity. So if there's braking or if there's acceleration. So similarly, Similarly to Dragon, um, they might be able to feel... Oh, 
thought we were going to get some comms there, perhaps not. Um, they might be able to feel changes in velocity, uh, but because they are also going as fast as the Dragon capsule itself, they really can't feel that they're actually going 17,500 miles per hour. And that's, of course, at this point in the mission Hello. now. Now, yesterday during launch that is a little bit of a different story because the crew, like you said, is experiencing that change in acceleration. So at that point, they are able to really feel those Gs that they're pulling as they do travel a lot faster than they were on the launch pad before they blasted off. Absolutely. So Dragon is now under 300 meters from the space station. Looks like it's about 294 meters away. You can see it continuing to get larger and larger in the screen. This is a really cool shot because now we have something for frame of reference other than planet Earth. So this view from a camera on the port truss segment of the station, you are just barely seeing the Japanese robotic arm in the very center of the screen there, as well as part of the Japanese logistics module on the right that houses some experiments conducted aboard the space station. And so one of our crew members for this flight is Koichi Wakata, who is an astronaut from the uh, Japanese Aerospace Exploration uh, Agency. We're just six, uh, under six minutes until we hit waypoint one. As we've mentioned before, um, this movement from waypoint zero to waypoint one will swing Dragon up and out in front of the station. So if you've been watching that capsule, it has been moving slightly in that frame. Um, yeah, so it'll move up and in front of the station and it'll pause at a distance of two, approximately 220 meters. At that point in time, Dragon will be on what we call the docking axis, uh, which basically means that it's directly in front of the docking port that it will be aiming for. Um, that port is the forward port on node two, uh, which is the Harmony um, module, and that's where both of the international docking adapters, or IDAs, are located. Uh, those were installed for new commercial spacecraft flights uh, and any other future spacecraft that also uh, use the international docking standard. And you could really see in that graphic that was just on your screen how those different burns in this very phased approach really put Dragon into place, into the place that it is now, exactly right in front of the docking adapter. You can really start to make out the International Space Station. You can see the solar arrays there, and even some of the vehicles that are currently docked to the space station. There's right now four vehicles docked to the International Space Station. That includes the SpaceX Freedom capsule, which Crew 4 arrived on and will return back home shortly, as well as the Russian Progress 80 and 81 and the Soyuz MS-22. Once again, we are heading toward waypoint one, uh, about three and a half minutes until uh, that checkpoint is reached. After that, it will be on to waypoint two, and that is once Dragon is only 20 meters away uh, at waypoint two, the spacecraft will focus on aligning its docking system with the docking adapter. Dragon will fly in and make contact with the docking adapter, and that will give us what we call soft capture. That soft capture ring will then retract until sensors indicate that it's time for the hooks to drive in place, and then give us that hard capture, which firmly secures Dragon to station. 
then after that uh, hard capture is confirmed, we'll do leak checks uh, for that hatch opening. And that is always a, a moment that's really fun to watch. Um, and well, I guess I, I should say it takes time, right? Once the hatch is open, it's another several minutes before they can actually egress, but it's uh, really nice to see the crews greet each other um, after Drag Dragon's arrival. It's worth the wait. <laughs> Absolutely. And as Dragon continues to get closer to the space station ahead of docking, we are hearing that everything is proceeding as expected. Still looking towards an on-time docking at 1.57 Pacific this afternoon. And you are starting to see some blinking light. Dragon and station SpaceX on the big loop. Expect reconfiguration of the C2V2 link shortly. And you did just hear that call about the C2V2 system being reconfigured. The C2V2 system is the common communications for visiting vehicles, and that really helps to set up uh, the data stream from Dragon to the space station and provides another path for Dragon telemetry to reach Earth. I think that should be renamed C squared, V squared. <laughs> There we have live views from inside Dragon Endurance with the Crew 5 crew. All four astronauts are in their seats, uh, buckled in, and as you can see, their suits are on, but the visors are up. So earlier, the crew uh, donned or put on their suits, and we had four good leak suit checkouts, um, kind of a mouthful to say there, and Basically, in order to execute that, we have the crew put their suits on, put the visors down, lock it into place, and then we um, they get in their seats, they hook up the umbilical, uh, just like they did whenever they ingressed into the capsule prior to launch. And then we pressurize the suits uh, at a certain determined pressure for a certain amount of time, and then we basically just check to make sure that those suits are holding that pressure. Um, and then that's, that's the leak check. Uh, so once that's good, uh, we're able to continue on uh, with the approach uh, timeline, which, uh, you know, gosh, I think it might have been about an hour ago. Feels that much? Feels, feels that way. I don't know. Time's kind of distorted <laughs> over the last uh, 40 hours, it feels like. Um, but yeah, so with the crew in their seats, um, they are buckled in. It's a five point safety harness uh, that it, it acts basically as a uh, pretty advanced seatbelt. Um, and the crew, of, of course, is basically plugged into their seats. Uh, we had a view just a moment ago um, using the umbilical and that of course provides um, communication telemetry um, uh, of the of the crew themselves uh, and uh, also fresh air uh, so while they're sitting there uh, in their seats they we are pumping um, a nitrogen oxygen mixture through the suit um, as I, as I mentioned before, we are an active operations building here, so um, you'll have to excuse the, the background noise behind us. Um, but yeah, the, the, the crew is, is very comfortable in their suits. We are flowing some of that fresh air of that nitrox uh, mixture through the suits, uh, nitrox being the, the same stuff that you breathe whenever you're scuba diving. As we await confirmation of Waypoint 1, the International Space Station is flying 264 statute miles over Washington State. In fact, just a few moments ago, it flew over the city of Seattle. So if any of you were outside, you might have caught a glimpse of it flying overhead. But it looks like it's already passing into Canada, and that just really goes to show how fast 17,500 miles per hour is. You cover a lot of ground when you're going that quick. For sure, it's it's uh, that that exact point is kind of what makes it easy to spot, especially at night. Um, it, it just you know, looking up at the night sky, um, I myself have an app that alerts me whenever <laughs> there's going to be an ISS pass overhead. Uh, but I've actually accidentally seen it sometimes too, and uh, you look at it, and it's this constant bright light. And a lot of people think, oh, it's an airplane, but if you really watch it, it's going way faster than an airplane is. <laughs> 
And if you are interested to see when the International Space Station is flying over where you live, you can go to the website, spot the station on NASA's website, and you can put in your address, your location, and see when it's going to be flying overhead. Like Kate mentioned, it is a pretty cool thing to see. Yeah, it is pretty neat. Um, actually, uh, this is a good representation of how we're able to see the station uh, while we are on planet Earth. So you can see the space station there it has lots of solar panels. Uh, um, and it's pretty bright when the sun is shining on it. So at nighttime, when the space station is orbiting Earth, um, those solar panels in the station itself will reflect the sun's light back down at us. And that's what makes it um, so easy to spot. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that there's no blinking. So um, that's a good different differentiator between an airplane and the station. Uh, the space station, you won't see any blinking coming from the station. And we are now under 250 meters away from the space station. And you are getting a view of Mission Control in Hawthorne, which is just behind us here. This is the room where all of the um, SpaceX flight controllers, uh, responsible engineers, uh, and the core, the crew operations and resources engineer, uh, is positioned, or excuse me, is seated um, as they are basically constantly monitoring Dragon. Um, we have someone on console 24 seven while there is a Dragon on station uh, or in orbit. Um, and this is one of the rooms that we do that in. And similarly, the International Space Station Flight Control. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. We see endurance two minutes out from waypoint one. Soft capture ring extension will begin shortly, and Dragon will continue approach to waypoint two. Dragon copy. <laughs> And those words there as we continue to make our way to waypoint one, now 237 meters away from the International Space Station. As we've mentioned before, uh, these checkpoints, uh, these imaginary zones that we keep talking about are very important for Dragon or really any spacecraft that's uh, heading to or departing from the space station uh, have to abide by it uh, because everything is um, you know, everything is designed to keep the crews both inside the spacecraft as well as the crew on station safe. Um, there are many checkpoints just to make sure that all systems are func functioning properly and as expected uh, with the spacecraft prior to allowing it to get um, any closer to, to the station. And we are hearing that we're just about a minute out from reaching waypoint one. Dragon 231 meters away from space station. So we are coming up on waypoint one, which is 220 meters right in front of the space station. And that milestone will put us right in line with the docking access. So once Dragon reaches that dock, docking access, it will have about 20 hours of power, so it could easily hold there for quite some time and could reattempt to, to dock if necessary, but everything is really proceeding on track for docking today. And we did just hear confirmation that we are at waypoint one. The next milestone will be waypoint two, and that's coming up in just under eight minutes. Um, as we mentioned before, everything is um, a series of checks and um, uh, phases uh, are really of approach. Uh, in this next phase, uh, we're gonna be heading to waypoint two. Um, and at that point in time, Dragon will f um, basically be uh, you know, in line with the dock that it is heading to. Of course, it's using the- Station, Houston on the big loop. Houston, 
can we see on the big loop? Please monitor approach for step three of 1.102 Dragon Approach and Retreat Monitoring. Let us know when your review is complete and you are ready for docking. And uh, Houston, procedure review is complete. Station crew is ready for docking. Houston, copy. And we were just getting an incredible view there of both Dragon and the Moon with Earth in the background. Pretty spectacular. And also, uh, to see. has uh, Dragon video. Copy that. And there you can see that view again. The moon in the farthest portion of your screen there, the furthest back circle, Dragon in the middle, and the International Space Station in the closest field of view, of course, with our pale blue dot underneath it. Again, the station and Crew Dragon are traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, excuse me, 17,500 miles per hour uh, around planet Earth. So while it looks like <laughs> Earth is rotating slowly, uh, it's actually going pretty quick. Um, the station is roughly 250 miles above Earth. Um, you can think of that as the distance from Los Angeles to San Francisco, uh, or perhaps from Kennedy Space Center to Miami, um, depending on which frame of reference um, relates most to you. But yeah, this view with the moon, again, that the moon is on the, is that dot on the left. Crew Dragon is the dot on the right, of course, uh, heading toward the station. So at this point in time, we have completed, uh, we have reached waypoint one. We are heading toward waypoint two, uh, which is expected in about five minutes. Uh, initial contact between Dragon and the International Space Station is expected to occur at about 1.57 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, before reaching waypoint one, mission operators conducted a go-no-go -go poll to allow Dragon to begin its approach to waypoint two, which is located inside the keep out sphere, one of those imaginary uh, shapes that we keep talking about, uh, and that is about 20 meters away from the space station. And as mentioned previously, all visiting vehicles take this phased approach to station, stopping at predetermined gates for teams to run quick checks on vehicle performance before approaching the space station. And when it comes to bringing two spacecraft together, slow and steady really wins the race as docking operations require a great deal of precision to make sure we're keeping the spacecraft and the crew safe. Absolutely. At the 20 meter distance from the station's docking adapter, um, Dragon's approach will slow and it will begin to align itself with the adapter to come in for the final approach. Dragon will first make initial soft contact with the adapter's soft capture ring, which will then retract to bring Dragon in for the hard capture sequence. As a further precaution, Dragon's soft capture system includes a set of rotary spring dampeners to lessen the force of the contact between the capsule and the station. So for now, let's check in with NASA's Shaniqua Vereen in Houston for an update on station. Shaniqua? Thanks, Sandra. So far this afternoon, the crew on the station awoke around 1 p.m. Central Time from a nap period, understanding they would have a longer day being in Greenwich Mean Time, and they continued preparations from crew fives of, for Crew 5's arrival. That included setting up casas or temporary living quarters for the additional crew members and special software in the station's cupola to track Dragon's approach and docking. Link reconfiguration and soft capture ring extension complete. Dragon is configured for docking. I can copy. And you just heard from the core in SpaceX Mission Control. That was Jake Vindel reporting to Nicole Mann, commander of Dragon, that they are configured for docking. 
back on the International Space Station, we have NASA's Chell Lindgren being primed for monitoring and making sure Dragon, Endur Dragon Endurance stays in the expected zones. Once Dragon is docked, it will join four parked spacecraft at the International Space Station, including SpaceX Dragon Freedom, which brought up the Crew 4 astronauts back in April. Russia's Soyuz MS-22 cruise ship and Progress 80 and 81 resupply ships. Again, after docked, Lingren will also be primed to start hatch opening operations. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, Houston and Hawthorne have pulled go for docking. Confirm visors down and that you are ready for approach two. Check two five, all visors are down. We are ready for approach two. Copy crew five. Visors down, we're gonna enable the approach shortly. As a reminder, once Dragon is inside the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. Dragon copy. And you just heard another call from the core at MCCX responding to the crew that they are in preparation for docking in just about 13 minutes from now and looking at to arrive at waypoint two in about three minutes and 30 seconds. Again, once docked, NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren will be primed for getting ready for hatch operations. That includes him going to the large hatch on the node two forward, giving him access into the pressurized mating adapter the crew then will have to pressurize the vestibule, between, which is the small space between the hatches on the Dragon and the space station. This was exposed to the vacuum of space prior to docking, so the crew will then need to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal to that of the, as, the atmospheric pressure on Dragon and inside the station. Lingeren will use a small valve that the station's hat, on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the station's vestibule Flight controllers here in Houston will monitor and verify the pressure readings here to make sure that everything's leak free before we get ready to open up the hatches for the crew. NASA Flight Director Greg Whitney is leading teams here in Mission Control Houston for Dragon's approach and docking today. And it's arriving in just about 12 minutes and 37 seconds. To his right is Capcom Amy Dill, who will be communicating with the crew aboard station. Right now, there are currently seven astronauts on the station, seven astronauts and cosmonauts living and working on the International Space Station, including NASA's Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, Frank Rubio, and the current station commander and European Space Agency astronaut, Samantha Christopher Reddy, and Roscosmos cosmonaut, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin. Crew 5 bringing the crew complement to 11. Again, we're excited to get our Crew 5 astronauts aboard. That's the latest from here in Mission Control Houston. Back over to you, Hawthorne. Shaniqua. Uh, now at this point in time, uh, waypoint two is up next, and that will put Dragon only 20 meters away from the space station. Uh, from there, the spacecraft will focus on aligning its docking system with the inter international docking adapter, or as you sometimes hear it referred to as the IDA. And Dragon is now less than 40 meters away from Space Station. In fact, it's now 37 meters and closing away from docking. You're getting a good view right now of the trunk with those solar arrays that we chatted about earlier. Once Dragon does dock, it will be receiving its power from the International Space Station. 
And you can also see some of those small thruster firings as we continue to close in on docking, just making sure everything is precisely aligned and that Dragon is directly in front of the international docking adapter. We're about 20 seconds away from waypoint to arrival. We are expecting docking to occur just a little bit later than planned, about 10 minutes uh, from now. Dragon 25. And we did just hear confirmation that Dragon has arrived at waypoint two. Once again, we're about 10 minutes away from docking to the International Space Station. We have a great view there on your screen of the forward hatch of Dragon. We can see that docking mechanism, uh, the gray pieces there uh, now exposed and uh, we have a great shot of it now that Dragon is so close to station. Station Houston on the big loop. Dragon is resuming approach and is go for docking. Monitor per steps five and six. In one decimal one zero two, Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station copies, welcome. And that's the call we wanted to hear. Dragon is go for docking. Just a few meters away from the space station now, but when we are about at the two meter um, point, you may hear a call called CHOP, and that stands for the crew hands off period. While everything has been done autonomously today so far, when we do hear that call CHOP, it means that any re-rendezvous would need to be done automatically through Dragon and the crew would not be initiating any of that. We are 16 meters away from the International Space Station. On the left is Crew Dragon Endurance coming in for docking. On the top right with its nose cone um, deployed is the Crew Dragon Freedom that is currently docked to the International Space Station and is the vehicle that Crew 4 will return home on. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, both <laughs> two dragons really in the same shot. Uh, once again, the Crew 5 vehicle there on the left, making its, uh, its docking approach, uh, which we're expecting in under 10 minutes. And then, in, you know, of course, the Crew 4 vehicle there on uh, the previous shot on the right-hand side. As we get closer, we can see more and more of the Dragon vehicle. Uh, for those of you wondering what those four black circles are, um, those are the forward Drago, the forward Draco thrusters. SpaceX copies, 10 meters. And 10 meters away from space station now. And if you look at the Dragon capsule, you can actually see the side Draco thrusters thrusting, um, helping to steer uh, Dragon closer to station accurately. And hearing we're just a couple of minutes away from docking should be coming up just momentarily. Dragon now traveling less than one meter per second as it closes in for docking. As you've said before, Sandra, slow and steady wins the race here. Less than 10 meters separating Dragon five from meters. the space station. Copy, five meters. And that call, five meters separating Dragon from space station. Should be about a minute until we are docked and crew five is home <laughs> for the next few months.
Should hear that call for chop here momentarily. Two meters, chop. And there it was. Copy, two meters. Two meters, crew hands off point. Happens about 25 seconds before contact. One meter. One meter. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, contact and soft capture complete, attenuation in progress. And contact confirmed. Dragon made contact with the International Space Station at 2.01 p.m. Pacific, just off the west coast of Africa. Now there are still a few steps that Dragon has to complete before it is securely attached to the station. So uh, we are gonna walk through those. Um, we're going to have uh, completion of that SOP capture ring retraction, uh, and then we're going to begin the hard capture sequence. Uh, and then a few minutes after that, um, uh, some time passes um, that we will have completion of that hard docking. Dragon SpaceX, ring retraction in progress. So there is that first, I mentioned uh, that ring retraction for soft capture. And that soft capture ring will retract until its sensors indicate that it is time for the hooks to drive and create a hard capture. There are 12 hooks that are going to be driven to form that hard mate, and they take place uh, in a series of six. So the first six will drive, and then the second six will drive. Just like everything about the approach this morning, everything is in sequence. <laughs> Now you might notice the view of Dragon is a little darker than it was before um, as it was coming in. Uh, of course, the station and now Dragon are orbiting Earth and it looks like they are uh, lost the sunlight there. Uh, live view there from SpaceX Mission Control uh, based here in Hawthorne, California. And so if you are just tuning in with us, Crew 5 has safely completed docking to the International Space Station. That docking occurred at 4.01 p.m. just off the west coast of Africa. Their journey began yesterday afternoon when they lifted off at 11 a.m. Central Time from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Three first-time flyers on board Crew 5 and one veteran astronaut from JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Koichi Wakata. And then those three first time flyers are NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, who is the first ever female commander of a Dragon. And once she floats on board, Space Station will be the first Native American to ever visit the International Space Station, as well as NASA astronaut Josh Cassida, who's the first time flyer as well. And the other first time flyer is Rose Cosmos, Cosmona Anya. That's right. Now we have a little over five minutes left until docking is considered complete. Um, as Sandra was just mentioning, the three first time space goers uh, on this mission, I, I would have to imagine that at this point in time, um, they must be like children sitting in a car seat just wanting to get out. <laughs> um, they have spent um, a long time making this journey, um, literally since launch yesterday at noon Eastern time, uh, yeah, noon Eastern time. And, um, you know, they have friends on board station and I bet they're just so excited to get out of their seats, uh, get out of their suits, open up that hatch, and ultimately go get to hang out with their friends for a couple months. Absolutely. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. I can copy.
and we did hear confirmation that the soft capture ring retraction is complete. So the next up is that hard capture sequence start. Again, there's 12 hooks that are going to drive in to create that hard dock between Dragon and the space station. We'll first see six of those hooks begin to drive and then the other six and that will uh, have our docking be complete. Now looking forward uh, to the next events, like I mentioned before, um, we uh, docking, we have about now four minutes left uh, until docking is complete. Um, the team, or excuse me, the Crew 5 crew will uh, have the opportunity to doff or take off their suits. Um, and then it's almost 90 minutes until they actually get to open that A-pass hatch uh, and get to go see their friends, uh, really get to greet uh, the Crew 4 crew and the other members uh, other astronauts that are on station. So um, as we've mentioned before, everything is a series of checks and check-ins. Um, everything is a, 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 a checklist, a, a sequence of events. Um, and so, yeah, they, they're, they're at the station. Station Houston on the big loop. MCS configured. Proceeding with hook driving. So there's that conversation. There's that confirmation that we will begin to drive that first set of six hooks, um, and that is uh, basically that, that hard capture process. So hooks are driving. This is the second time in the flight that we have done something with these hooks. Uh, they were also used just a short time after liftoff, uh, after Dragon was inserted into a nominal orbit, and they helped um, to allow that nose cone to swing open. So hooks are continuing to drive. First six hooks driving. Live view there inside the Dragon capsule. We can see the crew has their visors down uh, in the locked position. Again, this is to ensure uh, that if, you know, for any unlikely event that Dragon were to lose pressurization, that suit would act as a second capsule, basically. It's, a, 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 it's almost a spacecraft of its own, being able to provide environment and pressure for the crew uh, in an emergency. And the crew does wear that spacesuit during all of the dynamic phases of flight, during launch, of course, docking. But here pretty shortly, they will be able to take off that spacesuit and they'll actually hang them up to um, dry before they begin to pressurize that vestibule and get ready to float through the space station hatch. As we've mentioned before, those suits are unique, uh, especially fitted for each astronaut. So they, uh, they all have their own uh, storage locations uh, that the suit will get stored in uh, and then they'll uh, actually put them back on not right before they come home they'll do another fit check uh, basically um, shortly before they come home so the crew four crew uh, will be doing that soon uh, in preparation for their return back to earth uh, hopefully next week um, but yeah that's basically just to make sure that the spacesuit that they arrived in still fits well um, no like hot spots for movement um, and is, you know, still good for them to wear home. As Sandra mentioned before, those of us here on Earth, uh, we know what gravity feels like and the body does change with a lack of gravity. So in the microgravity environment that the astronauts uh, live and work in for months at a time, um, your bodily fluids change. So in space, um, your, your bodily fluids basically reach an equilibrium across your body, whereas here on Earth, uh, they're concentrated near our feet, or, you know, wherever down is. And so, um, yeah, we'll, the, we'll have the crew put those spacesuits back on uh, prior to um, they, prior to beginning their, um, their journey home, just to make sure that everything still fits well. Uh, now, we should be getting confirmation that docking is complete here um, in the next couple of seconds. So standing by for confirmation of docking complete. And we did hear that the uh, first set of six hooks is driving and has completed that uh, process. So now the next six are driving. And as you said, once we um, have that finished up, we will have docking complete and we will have what we call a hard mate. So that should happen just um, a few moments from now.
The second set of hooks is continuing to drive. And if you are just tuning in with us, four astronauts arrived to the International Space Station just minutes ago at uh, 2.01 p.m. Pacific, 5.01 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And they did complete the soft capture ring retraction, which uh, was the initial step in the docking sequence. And now we are completing the hard capture sequence. We've had the first six hooks drive and we are standing by for confirmation that the last six have driven successfully and all there's 12 hooks that will mate Dragon to the International Space Station. With that live view of Dragon there on your screen, we can see the pilot and commander uh, so from this viewpoint, it would be Commander Nicole Mann on the left-hand side of your screen. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, hard capture complete. Moving on to ring retraction and then umbilicals. Dragon copy. All right, and there we just heard that uh, that hard capture is complete. Good news there. Yeah, that's the call that we wanted to hear. All 12 of those hooks have made it to the space station as expected. So again, we do have a hard dock at this moment. Now, once the crew gets confirmation that docking is complete, they'll then be given the go to doff or take off their spacesuits, uh, and then begins the couple hours long pro process of uh, opening the various hatches, both on the Dragon side as well as the station side. So even though they have arrived at station and we have a hard dock, um, confirmed hard dock, um, there's still a couple hours left to go uh, before the crew gets to, um, uh, before the Crew 5 crew uh, gets to embrace their fellow space station crew members. And there will be a couple of different tasks to do um, after we do get those hatches open in Dragon to just uh, get ready for those docked operations. Most of it is focused on the atmospheric control on board Dragon. So they will uh, be removing what's called a LIO canister or a lithium hydroxide canister that is used to help scrub CO2 from the Dragon cabin during free flight. And they'll also rem remove a seal um, that uh, essentially integrates Dragon's cabin with the rest of the space station. And we did hear that the umbilical deploy is underway, as we've mentioned a couple of times. Once those umbilicals get set up and attached, that's how Dragon will get its power from the International Space Station. On the flight uphill, it utilized the solar arrays that are located on the Dragon's trunk. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, umbilicals mated, docking sequence complete, crew Dragon Endurance, and Koichi, Nicole, Josh, and Anna, welcome to the International Space Station. Thank you so much. Crew 5 is happy to have finally arrived at the International Space Station. Endurance is a very proper name for our training mission and the spacecraft. To the NASA and the SpaceX teams, a huge thank you. Especially shout out to our training lead, Tyler Carr, for all the uh, simulations you put us through and the training. We were definitely well prepared, and we are looking forward to getting to work. We made it to the International Space Station. It has only been the efforts of so many people. We thank you and we'll make you proud. Let's go, Expedition 68. Thank you, everybody, yes, for giving us this, this smooth ride, just like in the simulation. And uh, you trained us well, and I uh, really appreciate all the efforts of the SpaceX team, NASA, Roscosmos, Chandra, ESA, and Canada of all these national partners, and I cannot wait to start working uh, with our crewmates on Expedition 68.
And there you just heard some words. And Dragon, on behalf of SpaceX, it's been a pleasure working with all of you. Ground teams will be enabling hardline power and comm connections shortly as we work towards hatch opening. In the meantime, you are go to doff suits per procedure 4.012 and we'll bring the cameras external. Some lovely words there from the Crew 5 crew. Uh, they have just completed docking. Good read, Anna, and great words. Last commentary there from uh, Anna Kikina. Um, I, I, I don't speak Russian, but I think there's a pep in her step. I think she's pretty excited to be there. So all that being said, now that Dragon has completed the docking sequence, the spacecraft must undergo a handful of checks before we're able to open that hatch. Uh, the crew on board Dragon will now get a chance to get out of their suits. Dragon, SpaceX on Dragon to ground, cameras are external. was just uh, SpaceX core, um, uh, just letting the crew know that they're good to... Okay, we copy. Turn on the cameras. Thanks for watching. Just letting the crew know that they are good to take off their suits. Uh, those onboard cameras have now been turned off for privacy reasons. Uh, so yeah, uh, the crew will get a chance to get out of their suits before moving into hatch operations. That's right, and things will start to be picking up inside the space station too as NASA's Chell Lindgren gets the hatch on the station side ready to be opened and starts pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between the Dragon and station hatches. With Dragon docked, that's going to do it for us here in Hawthorne, but our coverage for Crew 5 won't stop here. The coverage will continue with our team positioned in the International Space Station Flight Control Room in Houston. So for Kate and I, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in. But Shaniqua, what's ahead for Dragon? Oh, you go. Thanks, Sandra, and goodbye to my friends at SpaceX. Mission Control Houston will take you through to the hatch open anticipated at 5.42 p.m. Central Time and the welcome ceremony expected at around 7.15 p.m. Central Time. It was a very exciting moment here for us in Mission Control Houston following Dragon's docking. That was a successful docking at 4.01 p.m. Central Time, 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time, while flying 259 statute miles off the coast of West, the west coast of Africa. It's great to see Dragon docked. Energy in the room here is high. There was applause and smiles all around the room upon docking. Now that we are docked, Chell Lindgren is securing some hardware, then moving right into hatch operations. First, he will open the large hatch at the node two forward, giving him access inside the pressurized mating adapter. Then he'll have to pressurize the vestibule, which is the small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. This was exposed to vacuum prior to docking, and we need to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal to that of the atmospheric pressure on Dragon and the space station. Lindgren will use a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the vestibule. Flight control is here, and Mission Control Houston will monitor the pressure and temperature readings inside. And Dragon on Dragon and ground. Uh, Come check from the cabin mic. Koichi, on the cabin mic, we've got you five by five. How us on the speakers? We got you loud and clear on the speakers. Thank you.
station, Houston, on Space Ground 2 for Chell. And you just heard a call out from Capcom here in Mission Control Houston. Amy Deal sitting right next to the flight director, Greg Whitney, leading the docking and rendezvous portion. We are currently docked to the station and we are waiting for the crew to do some steps to be ready to open the hatch. We just heard a call to NASA's Chell Lindgren and he was given the go to go ahead and begin those uh, hatch operations. First, he will open the large hatch at node two forward, giving him access inside the pressurized mating adapter. Then he'll have to pressurize the vestibule, which is the small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. This was exposed to vacuum prior to docking, and we need to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal to that of the atmosphere on Dragon and the space station. Linger will sm use a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the vestibule. Flight controllers here in Michigan Control Houston will monitor the pressure and temperature readings inside and verify that everything is leak free before we get ready to open up the hatches. Again, we're expecting hatch open to happen at 5.42 p.m. Central Time. Following hatch open, the crew will configure Dragon for on, or on orbit ops and get a safety briefing. With critical research and science aboard Dragon today, they will begin to unload the hardware. A few hours from then, we will have a welcome ceremony with all crew members for crew four and crew five, as well as the astronauts aboard, astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the space station. Station on a big loop. The no two forward hatch is open. Copy, no two forward hatch open.
Excuse me, two for a hatch open. Go ahead, Sam. The uh, ASAS equalization bundle was opened at GMT 2126. Houston copies. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, vestibule pressurization in progress, reference 4.400, 4 telemetry if you'd like. Copies, I'm in 4.400. Houston Station on two on the big loop. APAS valve is closed at 2127. And the no two camera is on if you'd like to route it. Houston copies all. And you just heard some calls from the crew to the from the crew on board station and inside of Dragon, basically all confirming that we've had start of hatch operations and pressurization of that vestibule. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground for a few vehicle configuration items. Hey Nicole, uh, first item, ISS power connection has been established. Uh, everything's looking nominal there. Second item has to do with the waste system. Report ready to copy. Copy, we have good power and ready to copy for the waste system. All right, we are looking for your help characterizing the, some power draw we saw on the waste fan while it was being used prior to suit on on approach. So we're gonna add an addendum to procedure 4.400, step 5.1. The action as it stands now is to work through your cabin configuration for that whole procedure and, and just call down when you reach section five, uh, we've got an addendum in 5.1. Ready to copy in 5.1. Uh, understand you're ready to copy. I think this is going to go smoother if we just wait till you're actually there. Um, and so I'd, I'd recommend y'all continue with suit doffing and then uh, give me a call when you're at section five. Copy. 
Gotcha, no problem. We'll call you when we get into Section 5. Sounds good. Thanks, Nicole. And you just heard calls from the core at SpaceX mission control, Jake Vindel. He's calling to commander of Dragon, Nicole Mann. Dragon will be also doing some operations on their size, preparing Dragon for a long duration stay. They are looking at a six month science mission while aboard the International Space Station. And you're currently seeing live views of Dragon Dock to the International Space Station. Dragon and in the International Space Station and almost a sun in an orbital daytime. 268 statute miles above the Indian Ocean.
you're currently looking inside the International Space Station. We had views of uh, Commander Samantha Christopheretti and NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren just a few seconds ago as they were floating by, still making those final preparations for hatch open for the Crew 5's arrival inside the International Space Station. Again, we're looking for that hatch open to happen around 5.42 p.m. Central Time. If you're currently just tuning in, you're watching live coverage of NASA's SpaceX Crew-5 mission to the International Space Station, where they had a successful dock to the complex at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time. NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Ross Cosmos com cosmonaut Anna Kikina arrived to the International Space Station just about 39 minutes ago. Following Dragon's link up to the Harmony module, the crew aboard Dragon Endurance and the space station will be conducting some standard leak checks and they have begun pressurization of the vestibule between the spacecraft in preparation for the hatch opening currently scheduled for 5.42 p.m. Central Time, 6.42 p.m. Eastern Time. Upon hatch opening, Man, Casada, Casada, Okada, and Kikana will join the Expedition 68 crew of NASA astronauts Bob Hines, Chell Lindgren, Frank Rubio, and Jessica Watkins, Samantha Christopheretti of ESA, and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. For a short period of time, the number of the crew on the space station will increase to 11 people until Crew 4 departs. You currently see a dock dragon to the f to the forward node two hatch, and on your left and then to the right of your screen, you're seeing inside the International Space Station, where the crew is eagerly preparing for the ingress of the crew.
and Dragon Houston on the big loop. Stand by for hardline audio config. Now looking at views as NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren is entering the area of the hatch as he continues preparations for the Crew-5 crew to ingress from Crew Dragon Endurance.
Dragon, Houston on the big loop for Hardline Audio Voice Check. Houston, the Dragon, we have you loud and clear. I hear you loud and clear as well. Please call SpaceX for a hardline voice check. SpaceX, Dragon, for a hardline comm check. And Nicole, we've got you loud and clear as well. We have you the same. And you just heard the crew commander, Nicole Mann, on the big loop doing comm checks between Hurt and Dragon to Mission Control Houston, as well as MCCX Mission Control for SpaceX out in Hawthorne, California. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop for suits. Dragon, we're with you on suits. Okay, just 
just letting you know Section 4 is complete, and in Section 5, all suits are drying. We have started a timer. And do we still have drag in the ground with you, or is this our only compound? And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, we do have Dragon to ground, and I think we should head over there. We're just going to have a lot of uh, probably bothersome calls for the whole ISS crew. I tried you a couple times on a Dragon to ground before this with a new response, but I will switch over and try you again on Dragon to ground. Copy. Currently seeing a live view of Dragon Endurance ducked to the fort port of the Harmony module. On the big loop uh, for COM, just providing some awareness. I think we've got spotty Tedris coverage and have for some time. We can stick on the big loop uh, for the continued coordination here. Uh, you are go for 4.400 uh, for cabin configuration. Copy, we're go for 4.400, and you copy that the suits are drying. Copy that the suits are drying. Station Houston on the big loop for Chell. And I'm with you on the big loop. Okay, the lead check has passed. You are go for ingress part two in step three decimal one. Three decimal one, ingress. And uh, let's put that work now, thanks. Houston copy. And you just heard Capcom Amy Dill to Chell Lindgren. That's astronaut prime for hatch operations inside the International Space Station. He was given a go to safing and applying the ISS power to Dragon.
station, Houston on the big loop for Chell. Hey, Wadi, uh, for the hatch opening, yeah, you can continue to execute in step three decimal three. We go in three decimal three. Text Dragon on the big loop for toilet. Hey, Nicole, I'm with you on the big loop. Hey, Jake, I know you have some deltas when we secure the waste system, but in the meantime, is the waste system operational? What a question. Stand by one. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, uh, report ready to copy. I think we should just have you step into the troubleshooting we have planned for later. Hey, Jake, I happen to be up here, so I'm ready to execute your troubleshooting if you want. Okay, Josh, uh, we are going to have you turn on the waste fan and then head down to location 22, open the access panel, and check for flow through the mesh, then report back. How copy? Okay, copy. We're going to turn on the waste fan and then go down to 22 and see if we've got flow through the mesh. Good copy. And that was the core in MCCX, SpaceX's Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, confirming with the crew, Josh Cassida, as they continue to proceed through steps, making Dragon ready for its long duration stay, eventually being configured for a quiescent mode, and that will remain there for six months. There will be periodic checks throughout Dragon's stay to check on the spacecraft's health before departing six months down the road. We've got uh, bad news or good news, depending on how you look at it. We do feel flow down in uh, location 22, and we're guessing you want us to go grab the cat from the earlier demo. Dragon, that's a good read. You're ahead of us. We do want you to go install the cap, and we're going to plan to leave it installed through the dock duration. How copy? Copy that. We'll, uh, we'll install it with the cutter pins and leave it through the dock duration. Thanks.
currently seeing dual boxes, the Dragon Endurance attached to the space station on your left, and that's astronaut Chell Lingren inside the International Space Station as he continues preparations for the Crew 5's ingress into the space station. Again, we're looking for ingress to be about 35 minutes from now. Looking at 5.42 p.m. Central Time, 6.42 p.m. Eastern. Sensation on two on the big loop. The gas detector is reading zero after five minutes. Houston copies. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop for waste system. Go ahead, Jake. Hey, Josh, we've got a few thoughts here, um, working through it with the back room. We're wondering uh, if you've installed the cap already, and if you have not, we're wondering if you could uh, run a quick test to sort of characterize the flow through the funnel, stand by one. Okay, following up, uh, we are gonna have you install the cap and then you are uh, clear to use the waste system as normal. Okay, sounds good. The cap is installed and we did verify that we've got good flow at the funnel now. Thanks. Okay, we copy uh, good flow at the funnel and, and again, you are good to use the system as normal. We copy that, Jake. Thanks.
station, Houston on the Diddle Loop. For station on the Diddle Loop. All right, you have a go to perform step three decimal six, and we'll take the gas detector reading from inside the vestibule. Copy, go on three decimal six, and we'll give you a gas detector reading from inside the vestibule. Houston copies. And that was flight direct, that was Capcom, Amy Dill, to the crew on the big loop telling them that they could take some readings for the, the vestibule, still in those operations, preparing for the hatch opening, still scheduled now for 5.42 p.m. Central Time, 6.42 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're just joining us, we had a successful docking of the Crew 5 crew to the International Space Station at 4.01 p.m. Central, 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time, while the Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 259 statute miles off the west coast of Africa. We're currently in a brief handover period between satellites and should have those views of the International Space Station and Dragon back for you shortly. And they're back. You currently see the APAS hatch open. That was Jessica Watkins floating through. And we now see NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren going over to continue that the hatch operations to ready for the ingress of Crew-5. Just moments ago, they were given a go by Mission Control Houston to do readings of the vestibule, making sure that it was right pressure and the right um, mix inside the vestibule before opening the hatch of Dragon. Houston, station on the big loop. We have gas detector readings of zero in the vestibule. We copy readings of zero in the vestibule. And you just heard confirmation that there's a zero reading inside the vestibule, and that's zero gas being read from the vestibule.
to the station on the big loop. That's four decimal one. No condensation in the IDA vestibule. Houston copies. And we currently see it is all hands on deck as crew four, Samantha Crisferetti, current station commander, and Bob Hines in your forefront view in the center of the screen. And off to the right, we see NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins. Oh, sorry, that is Frank Rubio. and they contain preparations for the ingress of Crew-5 from Dragon Endurance.
Houston, SpaceX, station on the break loop. Station is ready for Dragon Hatch equalization. Houston copies. SpaceX copies. You just heard a call from the crew to Mission Control Houston as well as Mission Control at SpaceX that the crew is ready for hatch equalization. and you're currently seeing views from a camera inside the vestibule. Uh, they have a, ha the astronauts aboard the ISS have put a camera facing them to be able to watch as the crew ingresses from Endurance Dragon.
You're currently seeing all of crew four plus Frank Rubio out still preparing for that hatch open. We're looking. Yeah, um, uh, drag into ground. Come check. Hey, Koichi, I've got you five by five on dragon to ground. Jake, uh, here we, we can give you the uh, water and uh, food inventory uh, tracker re uh, reporting. We are ready to copy. Okay, uh, for uh, water inventory from uh, bag 203, we consumed all five bottles. And from bag 204, we consumed all five bottles. And uh, from uh, bag 207, two bottles uh, consumed. And from, uh, from bag 208, all five bottles were consumed. And that's the end of the water inventory. Copy on water, 203, five bottles. 204, five bottles, 207, two bottles, and 208, five bottles. And I've got one more question for you. We do bookmark one of those for the waste system flush. I wonder if you have already taken that into account. Yes, we have uh, taken that uh, bottle uh, into account for the uh, water flush. Perfect, and we're with you for food. Okay, for food, from a bag 301, breakfast and uh, lunch consumed, from uh, bag 302, snack and dinner were consumed, those are fully consumed, and from uh, bag 309, uh, three quarters of uh, breakfast and three quarters of lunch were consumed. And uh, from uh, back 310, snack is fully consumed and uh, half dinner is consumed. That's the end of the, uh, the food inventory. We copy. 301, two meals consumed. 302, both items consumed. 309 Station, had three Station quarters three of a breakfast and a lunch. Answers. 310 had snack consumed okay. and half a dinner. And I've got one hanging Station, question one for you. For Is the, the plan to, to dispose of all the half eaten and three quarter the eaten loop, items? Be about five minutes for equalization. Understood. Uh, go from uh, the Dragon Crew and uh, then Fatty. Yeah, Jake, uh, that's affirmative. We will consume those uh, uh, partially consumed ones. Okay. We will trash Sweetie, those uh, uh, partially cons consumed uh, food in the on the ISS. Okay, we copy all. Thanks, Kuichi. Thank you, Jake. You just heard on Dragon and Ground Loop, the crew, five crew inside of Dragon Endurance give a reading on the consumables that they used while in flight in approach and docking to the International Space Station. We are just awaiting them, the crew, five crew, to give an okay um, for... Dragon, SpaceX on Dragon to Ground for working towards hatch opening. for hatch opening. Hey, Koichi, understand uh, you're not quite through 4.400. 
we're, we've got some itchy folks here on the ground uh, looking to equalize across the hatch. Uh, we're looking to perform the first few steps of Section 6, equalize across the Dragon Hatch, while you continue with Section 5 for the waste system flush. Uh, how copy? Okay, uh, we copy. And you just heard the core Jake Vindel in SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, talk to Koichi Wakata aboard Dragon Endurance. He relayed that the ISS crew on board station is ready for uh, equalization and that they could continue procedures on their side as the ISS crew begins the equalization of Dragon. We are looking for about a five minute timer on that. After that period, teams will verify that the hatch is good to open between the space station and Endurance. Jake on uh, Dragon the Ground, I am uh, with you here in Section 6, and Josh is working Section 5. Copy, Nicole, and uh, just to confirm, we want to make sure the Dragon crew is ready to equalize across the hatch. A firm Dragon crew ready to equalize across the hatch. Okay, copy. We will send that command shortly. And again, you just heard Jake Vindel report to the crew that they are ready for hatch equalization. So that's ISS crew and the crew inside Dragon Endurance are ready to equalize the hatch. Again, the clock will start about a five minute timer. After that period, teams will verify that the hatch is good to open between the space station and Endurance. Station and Dragon, Houston on the big loop. Stand by for equalization, which is expected to take five minutes. Dragon copies. Station copies, five minutes. And you just heard it, five minutes for equalization. Once that process has begun, and that was Jessica Watkins on board the International Space Station and Nicole Mann inside Endurance confirming that they heard the go for equalization. Would you, Sam? Yeah, I know we've got some critical events going on, but uh, we also have some time critical um, activities after hatch opening. I just wanted to mention right now we're not able to um, refresh Optimus or access the Ops products uh, anywhere on IPET or SSC. Okay, we copy, Sam. We'll discuss down here. And uh, here's another follow-up. It seems like one of the laptops now finally uh, was able to open Optimus. Um, so it might have been just a very slow uh, situation for a moment. Uh, we'll keep uh, looking at it. Okay, we copy. Thanks for the report.
Take Hex Dragon on Dragon to ground for configuration. Nicole, we're with you on Dragon to ground. We're complete with section five. Uh, we're standing by here in section six. We've got the suits drying. I've got seven more minutes on the timer. Uh, big picture, are you thinking that we're gonna open the forward hatch and then go in for a quick hello and then come back to finish up with the suits and then step into the ISS procedure? Dragon, uh, that's a good read. We are going to step into the hatch open process right now and then have you come on back uh, for some final cabin configuration steps. Okay, copy. So we're going to, um, on your go, we will get that hatch open and then um, I'll just with you before we enter ISS and say hello. Then we'll come back and finish up with our suits and then we'll also execute 2.102. Copy all, and that's a good read. Stand by one. And we have confirmation inside Mission Control that Crew Dragon is equalized to the International Space Station. And the crew inside Dragon and the ISS are ready for hatch open. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, you are go for Dragon Hatch opening for the decal, followed by the remaining actions in 4.400 Section 6. Dragon Copies, we're opening the forward hatch and finishing up Section 6. And you just heard confirmation to the crew that they are go for hatch opening. And you can see smiling and waving the forward hatch on the Crew Dragon Endurance has been opened. The crew inside, the crew inside International Space Station are all smiles and waves as they see the beginning of ingress from the Crew 5 crew from Dragon Endurance. And that was a confirmed hatch open at 5.49 p.m. Central Time, 6.49 p.m. Eastern Time.
The hatch we've been waiting for is now open since docking at 4.01 p.m. Central Time, 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Hatch opening taking place at 5.49 p.m. Central, 6.49 p.m. Eastern Time. All smiles on, s on the International Space Station as they eagerly await the ingress of Crew 5. The hatch is open, but Crew 5 astronauts will need to work through a few more steps and gather some imagery as well. At the time of hatch open, Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 263 statute miles above the South Atlantic Ocean. It may be just a couple more minutes before Crew 5 astronauts ingress the space station to be welcomed onto their new home for the next six months as a part of Expedition 68 as they walk through a few more procedures. The crew inside of Dragon Endurance are installing some IMV ducting, mixing the air of the space station environment with the air inside of Crew Dragon Endurance. They'll seal some of the LIO or lithium hydroxide cartridges that scrubbed carbon dioxide inside of Dragon Capsule on the ride to the International Space Station. And they'll check some vent valves as well. So maybe just a little bit more time until we welcome them on board the International Space Station. And here we come through. First one through the hatch is going to be Nicole Mann, commander of Dragon, and now the first Native American woman to live and stay aboard the International Space Station. All hugs and smiles going around. Next one through the hatch is Josh Cassida, the pilot of Dragon. He's getting his welcome and hellos from the crew aboard International Space Station. And we see right now, right past Nicole Mann's hair, is Koichi Wakata of JAXA coming through the hatch. And last but not least, Anna Kikina of Roscosmos just entered the International Space Station and Crew 5 is officially ingressed from Dragon Endurance into their home for the next six months, the International Space Station. And with the addition of Crew 5 on board, there is currently 11 astronauts inside the International Space Station.
We're currently in a brief handover between satellites and should have the acquisition of signal.